Oh, we're picking up right where we left off. Did the school actually get destroyed? Was that a cannon? That really happened? That wasn't, like, literary license? It looks like it did. A biento. <laughs> it's so bizarre. When are we gonna get introduced to lurk lurking girl? Bye bye, way to die. And then into space! A giant heart. They can be seen by all. Game over screen. Very nice. And it just lands perfectly intact, as if nothing ever happened. <laughs> Alright, we have a uh, broken rules. But season three hype. The yuck was just an overboard attempt at disguising her, her deep love. Miko Ino wants to be soothed. Nope, nope, this is also transparent. This is the, the spin-off season that's about to happen. Or just part of the show. I mean, I feel like Miyuki and Kaguya can only continue this dance for so long. I mean, I realize what show this is, so <laughs> maybe that's naive, but season two seemed to end off in a way that suggested that they're a lot closer. Like, a lot closer closer. Although, there's still a long way to go. It's hard to tell. But this one, this pair is just beginning. This is gonna be the moment where he, it clicks. Is that what she's listening to? Oh. It's a good thing she's not watching porn. There's something so vulnerability inducing about that, even if it's not porn. Just to put this in very general terms, it's beyond headphones. The realization that people around you have been aware of something you thought was private for an extended period of time without you knowing. <laughs> I lost my phone right before going to the Philippines in an another crazy island adventure. And on the flight to the Philippines, there was this really weird music that was playing from the speakers and I was wondering what the purpose of it was. I thought maybe it was to like calm everyone down while on the flight. But then about three hours into the flight, I realized it was my phone alarm that I was unfamiliar with, so I didn't recognize it. Probably sounds like a really trivial story, but nevertheless it was a really mortifying experience. <laughs> I don't know why why is that? You know what I'll put into the same category as this, sort of? I was just talking about this with my girlfriend. I feel like everyone has this experience where you fall asleep in class and then you like jolt upright and you feel like everyone has been aware of you sleeping the whole time and everyone's staring at you. Though we were talking about that and, and I asked the question, have you ever seen that happen to anyone? And both of us answered no, which means probably no one noticed, right? Right. Anyway, I feel like you should let her know. <laughs> yes, the soothing sounds of society growing. <laughs> I saw a movie about a, a, like a girl crossing the desert that involved feral camels. I'll never look at camels the same again. You gotta let her- you should've let her know earlier, see? Oh, I'm terrified. Oh no! Oh no, you should have let her know er earlier! This is why! Oh no! Oh, that's... Oh no, that's heartbreaking! The she gets support from an audio recording. Moral support from heartthrobs, no less! That'll do it. Because it wouldn't mean anything if it was from someone who wasn't immensely visually appealing and muscular. We don't care about opinions of those people. I can see host bars in Inomiko's future. <laughs> right, you have to leave now. You have to leave. And this, it's all blown. Your cover is blown. This also is a sensitive moment when someone asks you what you're listening to. Again, protecting her in, in his way. No, but she, like, holds Fujiwara in regard above all the others. And now everyone's here. Yeah, I feel like you just gotta tell her ASAP. Pull her aside. Oh, he's taking one for the team! Damn, this is so so noble. This is so selfless, too. Because she won't, she won't know. She'll never know. <laughs> this, is, this is a jam. What you, I don't know what, what he would have to be ashamed about. Oh no, it's not, I, I just realized it's not over. She may not get the hint. Oh no, you know, digging your own grave. Oh no. Oh no. I mean, at this point, she kind of has it coming. <laughs> right, right. This is clearly like a selfless gesture. But they're both going to go down. 
an angel statue. <laughs> Although now, I, this works out to Ishi for Ishigami, right? Because she's gonna realize that he was trying to warn her, maybe. Enchanté. Again, my mignon. This mignon thing. <laughs> and it all comes out. The, yeah, yeah. That does not work. It's really not a big deal. I, I mean, honestly, you know, I was joking about how advice doesn't matter unless it comes from someone attractive. That was, that's, that's just a joke, but there's something in there that's true that also could be a really good thing. And what I mean by that is the interpretation of people's behaviors is a lot of the time going to be less about the specifics of the behavior itself and more about just how people already feel about the person. It's going to be filtered through the emotions that already exist. So, you know, is going to be mortified, but because because they like, you know, it's just kind of cute. In fact, on that note, what makes it most mortifying is the fact that she was being so rude to Ishigami. You know what I mean? She sort of had that coming in a sense. <laughs> this is relevant to the OVA with the exploration of embarrassing fandoms. The right person plays that song and everyone starts thinking it's great. You know what I mean? I think the ultimate point here is that you don't have to stress about the particulars of your hobbies. You know, it doesn't matter. There's way more important things. And perhaps the more you can square that away, the less it becomes a vulnerability and the stronger that it becomes. Kaguya doesn't realize. Or, or home. Hey, the messages. They're on a streak. They're private messaging. We just skipped a whole bunch of steps. It's a big moment. Line debut. <laughs> It's funny because I actually remember the first time I downloaded Kakao. I remember my Kakao debut. Oh, she's a natural. She's a, just such a natural. Oh, she just doesn't know how to send messages. Oh no, she's not a natural. She's not a natural. She's natural by accident. Yikes, she doesn't know about the number one. Or red or whatever. But the result is the same. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's going to have a psychological effect in her favor. He's in a dark place right now. He's going into a tunnel of despair. Parallel to the last episode where you got to risk hurting or embarrassing people. Oh no, and he, he knows that she instantly read it. Instant red receipt. Yikes. Oh, out of all the anime I've watched, this is probably the issue that cuts deepest. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you guys also know the feeling of just getting caught, like looking at the, the chat window at the wrong time. Or in other words, every five seconds for 10 hours and getting caught like this. But I feel like for Miyuki, because he's so emotionally wrapped up in it and he's quicker to doubt himself than he is to doubt Kaguya, it's not really gonna work against her. It's going to result in confusion for him, which is going to manifest itself as self-doubt and anxiety, most likely. Though you could probably say the same thing for Kaguya once she learns what she's doing, what she's done. <laughs> it's, yeah. He's preparing for a battle. Earlier I was hard on the idea that ignorance is bliss, but <laughs> I might make an exception. Oh, it's the first message she sent. It is? That is... Wow. Oh, there we go, okay. <laughs> That's great. Very clear image. You could train her to be better. You know, you could train her to be better than all of us. Oh, he figured that out. I would think that, like, she just had her phone open on her bed or something, you know what I mean? Like, she fell asleep. No, but you can't... Right, exactly, exactly. Right, right. And you can't call her out on that, because she'll just deny it and you just look stupid. Like, winning would not be winning here. It, it would be kind of an invasion. <laughs> this is a big deal that happened sort of unexpectedly while they're focusing on other things. This is a little bit like, this is a passive attack in a way. You know what I mean? Why do I feel like is going to take the fall? Ah, uh, it's a little too much though. <laughs>
He's actually like aligned with her fears. Is this really happening? This is a very like oh kawaii moment in real life. It's actually real. Wow. Props to Miyuki, I guess. I mean, it's petty, but in the scale of love is war and winning battles, this is one of the clearest ones so far, though I feel like just in real life this would backfire because it would create kind of a weird taste in your mouth. But you can't count Kaguya out. She might think of something. And she still has the sleeping excuse. Miyuki kind of gambling here, come to think of it. As a side note, it's cool how this tension about the text exchange led to a phone call because i feel like usually the phone call would have been a big deal for them no i actually just had this thought today it seems like one way to kind of hack your way into doing things that are terrifying is to set your sights on something way more terrifying first if things that are on some level objectively small are serving as major obstacles it might just be a sign that we're not reaching high enough if that makes sense you know like if you have a really really big goal that's absolutely gut-wrenchingly terrifying and you're exposing yourself to the pitfalls of exploring that goal like embarrassment and realizing you're not as capable in certain ways as you wanted to believe etc things that are in your own assessment below that level in terms of anxiety inducement suddenly become things that induce no anxiety whatsoever it's like the line in fight club you know after doing fight club everything in life gets the volume turned down i've experienced that in so many ways you know like doing something really difficult pushes me to my limits and then suddenly i find myself doing other things that i never really Really tried to overcome it just was a natural course of my growth just a quick example i feel like youtube has done a lot for my anxiety level in, in interactions with people in real life because you know i spent all this time talking about my ideas publicly in a way that's semi-permanent what what do i care about <laughs> one interaction with someone that's not recorded you know Kaguya, touch your cheek and recover it's not over yet sleeping i was sleeping phone was open yeah. he knows it's a gamble Ooh, the assist. Oh, that is an odd excuse, but actually believable. And his phantom escapes. Flees. Oh, and playing right to his insecurity, too, about being low class. Of course not. Who would do such a thing? You got, you just got, yeah, you gambled and lost. What would Erwin Smith think? Aw. That's a giant bear. <laughs> I don't know, I've just met people who don't play by the rules in that regard, and you just kind of chalk it up to them having weird social media habits, and you move on. Unless it's a girl you like, and then, you know, you just give up on life forever. <laughs> Chika Fujiwara wants to battle. <laughs> Oof. Speaking of hitting insecurities. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> Oh no, I thought he would have been stronger after like, you know, doing all that running and all that cheering. This is not a battle you can win. Why are you gonna drag poor Iyomiko into this? Damn. See, Ishigami has, has everything to lose right now. He can only lose because if he beats her, it's like, that was mean. If he loses, he'll never hear the end of it. It is not obvious. Everyone else gets dragged under the bus. I have a friend who's really into this. Turns out there's a lot of strategy to arm wrestling, a lot more than I thought. <laughs> Damn. Indeed. I just got some Aaron Yeager vibes there for a second. I feel like this will come down to Ishigami versus Chika. Hey, fellow left-handed person. I feel like all left-handed people have to use their right hand to some extent. Where did he go? <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah, she's trained, right? She's like Akira. Akido, expert and archery. You know what they say, hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. Yeah, she like, shot an arrow in the opening. Six, seven episodes. And he's out already! Well, that, that's that. My bracket already destroyed. Thanks a lot, Ishigami. I hate you. <laughs> she was had the banner ready. The weakling banner just was in her pocket the whole time. She probably had it drawn up before she even entered the office today. The layers of Shiga's scheming. What are they doing? What are they doing? Is she cheating again? Again cheating with the cheating! No, that's part of the game. That's part of the strategy. That's all fair game, no? I see she also has watched arm wrestling YouTube videos. No, but they just don't- wait, maybe I'm confused. I feel like they just don't understand arm wrestling. Maybe destroyed. 
Yeah, in hindsight, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> what was that? What just happened? What just happened? Oh, she touched her cheek. They're gonna have very powerful children. Yeah, it's not muscle strength. Eagle power. But are we excreting oxytocin? That's really the question. Are we getting sufficient oxytocin from this endeavor? Or adrenaline? Adrenaline and oxytocin. <laughs> Don't underestimate the power of their own pettiness. There's an oxytocin! I was <laughs> just enjoying their hand holding. This is what desperation looks like, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, damn. <laughs> Ideals restored. <laughs> Princess Muscle? Alright, can we stop with the fast reading, please? This is Attack on Titan mid-card level. The man who just dug under the wall and couldn't get to the bottom of the wall and then disappeared. Maybe it's the same man. You never know. It's not the most flattering title, maybe. This feels almost definitely like a reference I don't get. Muscle Queen wins. Exactly. And new ending! Or, or is this the new opening? I'm gonna wait till next episode to react to it, I think. It's probably gonna be more fun that way. Oh, we did win. I was about to say I want to see the result of this. Celebrating a little bit too much, though. Season 3 picking up where Season 2 left off and starting things off with a light but really compelling episode. I really think they kind of nailed it with the, the phone messaging stuff. It's always a breath of fresh air when these shows cover things that are not, you know, these grand heroic tales. It's more like navigating the complexities of chat messaging programs, which is probably more relevant, <laughs> if not as grand and, you know, ultimately significant. But they managed to cover these issues in a way where it's like, uh-huh, yeah, that's, that's how that goes, while also being a really great parody at the same time. So more or just fun Kaguya, but I am expecting that this is kind of the calm before the storm. This is the intro to the season, right? I know the show is on a roll. I know it's built momentum in terms of the, you know, the depth of the characters and their, their own journeys. And with this, the last known season at least, I have a feeling that I'm in for, you know, a real roller coaster.